The PicoScope has a very long acquisition memory and in fact it can be selected up to a length of one giga samples which is a very uh, long record length for this price range of instrument. But the time base window has to be set long enough to allow the digitizer to collect that number of samples to fill the memory. So to illustrate this I'm going to decrease my selected record length to one million samples and then we can view how many samples we have actually acquired on this particular time base setting. So under the views menu, under the views property, we can actually see that on this particular setup with the digitizer, which is a five giga sample, it was only uh, managing to acquire 500,000 samples. The uh, five is just to take care of the uh, endpoints. So I would have to double the uh, time window to acquire one million samples. So if I make the uh, time window uh, 20 microseconds per division, now we can see on this particular digital we managed to achieve the one million samples into the record. So I'm just going to stop the acquisition. So the, uh, another uh, use of the memory is buffers. So the default value is 32 buffers. So we've actually acquired 32 buffers each of one million samples. So now we could step through the acquired buffers. In fact, if we look at the data, we can see that each acquisition has a slightly different data. Or this can be used uh, with a graphical icon and it can graphically step through the acquired buffers. And this is very useful if we're looking for a, a particular glitch on, on any acquisition data. And the reason uh, we'd want to do that is we can actually select up to 10,000 buffers and this is available in the Tools Preferences menu and here we can set up the number of buffers up to 10,000. The uh, acquisition is also affected by the uh, trigger selection. So if we, for example, select a single trigger, again we could increase the uh, chosen record length up to one um, giga sample points. And then again the time window has to be long enough to achieve that record length. So, if I find so here we've only acquired uh, one million samples, so we'd have to increase the time window uh, to 20 milliseconds and then if we do an acquisition now we've managed to um, start to acquire uh, one giga sample in fact now it has acquired that number of samples and filled the memory and stopped. Another uh, tri trigger um, selection is the, the rapid mode so I'll just do the uh, go back to the default setup so under the trigger now I'm going to select uh, rapid um, this is a, another special trigger mode that as rapidly as possible it will acquire data into a buffer and uh, minimize the dead time between triggers so this is be good for looking for a random event so we can select the number of uh, buffers so if I select uh, say 30 buffers and again we'd need to uh, have a sufficiently long uh, record length to acquire the uh, chosen uh, data length. So I'm going to set this uh, back to uh, 1 million samples. And now I'm going to acquire the data. So now we've uh, got our 30 buffers and again we can step through the individual buffers and see that again the data is slightly different. So this is very useful for looking say for a random event and uh, you want to minimize the dead time. In fact the data is all collected and then display so to minimize any display time.